welcome in David Hood, senior writer for TigerNet.com. David, how are you doing tonight? Hey, doing well. Just kind of enjoying the calm before the storm tomorrow. Oh, there's definitely a storm coming in. I'll get this out of the way real quick for you. I'm a Florida State fan. Uh, my co-host, okay. my co-host is not a fan of either team. I'm assuming that you're a Clemson fan. So we'll try to get through this. We'll try to get through this the best we can. Yeah, we're, we're not killing each other via phone. We'll try. <laughs> All right. First thing I got to get to is Taj Boyd, 66.5% completion rating, almost 1,800 yards on the season, 15 touchdowns. Realistically, right now, is he in the Heisman conversation? I think so. Just you know, he, he's you know engineered a team that's in the you know top three in the country, depending on what happens. Obviously, tomorrow night, you just look at his entire body of work for his career and, you know, what he's been able to do this season despite having to replace, you know, first rounder and new Hopkins out at wide receiver, and I think he has to be in the Heisman conversation. Do you think that his counterpart coming in, Jameis Winston, he's at basically at the same percentage. I think he's actually better off stats right now than Johnny Manziel had at this point last year in the season. Is he... The front runner, if this game goes down the way I want it to, Florida State wins tomorrow night, is Jameis Winston in the Heisman running now? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, you, you take a look at what he's done, and the kid just doesn't ever really get rattled. And he's come up big in, in some games. And, you know, now we're kind of used to, you know, getting used to seeing freshmen kind of jump out. And, you know, I've watched a lot of college football this year, and Clemson had a couple of off weeks. And, you know, in, in my opinion, Marcus Mariota's probably – the front runner, but if uh, one of these guys has a big game tomorrow night, I think they jump right up, right up to the front of the discussion. Uh, this Clemson offense, 19 touchdowns through the air, 11 on the ground. Five of those that are on the ground are from Taj Boyd. If you take Sammy Watkins out of this game, what happens to this Clemson offense? You know, then you, you go through another guy that's got NFL talent, and Martavis Bryant. You've got a freshman in Mike Williams. The guy that's going to be better than the new Hopkins. I think that's probably the, the best thing about this Clemson offense. You got another guy that comes from in Adam Humphreys that, you know, he can make plays. And then Clemson's kind of got a running back by committee that, uh, you know, it's, it's Robert McDowell and Doc Brooks that they just go out and make plays and, and, and everything. But, you know, if it's third and short, there is no doubt that the running game goes through that quarterback position. You know, it's one of the things that I think Clemson, if they're, if they're going to be a championship team, They've got to be able to find somebody that can burn on third and short besides Taj Boyd. Who is that someone that can help Clemson convert on third down? Who do you think can step up and outperform Taj Boyd and help him out? Yeah, I think it's Zach Brooks. He's a, a kid that um, he didn't register last year. I think a lot of people felt like he probably should have. He got limited carries behind Andre Allen, teams with the, with the Arizona Cardinals now. You know, this year he's been behind the, the other senior water at McDowell, but, you know, I've noticed that in, in games when it gets down into that third and fourth quarter and you need to chew up some clock, you know, that's kind of a bigger guy. He's closing in on a couple of hundred pounds. He runs hard. He's not a guy that Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, wants in there. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of get the feeling that without hurting the seamless feeling, Zach Brooks might be the starter by the time the season's over. We're talking to David Hood, senior writer for TigerNet.com. Um, in your opinion, is this the biggest matchup in ACC history? I think so. You, 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 know, you go back and you look at some of the other matchups. And, you know, they didn't have what you would call BCS application. We didn't have all of that in some of those other games. I, I think this one is just definitely the biggest matchup. It's only from a standpoint of, you know, the SEC has had that run of so many titles and they've got that uh, – the image of the, the, the best conference in the nation and the ACC's kind of been an also ran. It's great for the conference's image to have a number three and a number five go out and play on the big stage like this and, you know, maybe propel themselves into the national championship talk. And that's exactly what the winner of this game is going to have. Clemson's defense leads the nation in sacks per game. Winston has been able to avoid the pressure a lot this season. Does Clemson get to him? And if they do, how many times do they get to him? I think that they can get to him. Um, you know, who knows how many times they're going to be able to get to him. You know, I, I don't know that he's faster than Zick Beasley, but that's probably the best thing about Clemson's defense line. Beasley gets all the all the ink, but there's a guy in the middle by the name of Grady Jarrett who is the son of former talking great Justin Tuggle. He is the, he calls himself the nephew of Ray Lewis, the great Ravens <laughs> linebacker. 
and and he really is the best player on Clemson's football team. He gets that push up the middle, and they've got another great athlete in Corey Crawford on the other side. And then, you know, not to be outdone is a, a freshman by the name of Shaq Lawson, who's now second on the team in sacks. And there's really no let up when he comes into the game. And, uh, you know, I don't really care who they play. These guys are going to get theirs at some point during the game. And that's really going to be a, a nice matchup to watch tomorrow night and see if he's able to avoid the rush and, and make plays with legs and, and kind of with us. I don't know how much you get to watch this this defense or even this whole team practice, but what are they doing to prepare for James Winston? Well, you know, they've got a, a guy that, that is third string on, on the scout. Or he, he's third string and he's played a little bit this year, and he's been on the scout team by the name of Chad Kelly. And uh, that's the nephew of uh, former Buffalo Bills quarterback, uh, Jim Kelly. And Chad's a great athlete. He can really run. And, uh, you know, I think he's probably given them a great look this week in practice, and then they've got some other wide receivers that are red shirting that, you know, they're freshmen. And I think we've got probably given them a pretty good look, but obviously, you know, when you're talking about a James Winston, nobody's going to go out there and, and replicate what he can do. He's just a, a special, transcendent type of talent. How do you think Jim Kelly feels about Clemson just knocking around their, his nephew to practice for James Winston? <laughs> He'd probably say, you know, hey, that's, uh, you know, that's what you've got to do because Chad, you know, he might, he might be the guy next year. You know, Clemson opens up the, the 2014 season down in Athens at Georgia, and it, it might be Chad Kelly, and I think stuff like this just gets him ready for that role. He might be the starter when that game when that game kicks off. This Clemson offense is definitely off, is awesome and is definitely a powerhouse, but another powerhouse, obviously, there is FSU. Uh, Rashard Green, Kenny Shaw come in. They're both on pace to break 1,000 yards receiving this season. What does this matchup do for Clemson's secondary, and what do they need to do to stop them? You know, I think they, they, they really are going to have to rely, like we've talked, on that, on that pass rush. And I'll tell you a matchup nightmare for Clemson is, uh, um, uh, Kelvin Benjamin, who's 6'5", 234. You know, he's, he's a tight end in a lot of other offenses. And at Florida State, he lines up in the slot. And Clemson's nickel guy, you know, he's, uh, you know, 5'8", about 180 pounds. And, uh, you know, that's one of the matchups I really want to watch tomorrow to see if Brent the defensive coordinator, if he's going to put a linebacker over there, if he's going to bring an extra safety into the game, maybe somebody like a J. Rod Curse to, to kind of cover him. I think that, uh, you know, with the size and speed of Florida State's receivers, it's all going to start with the pressure up front. What is Clemson's plan going to be for stopping Florida State's running game? Well, obviously, they're, I think they're going to have to stop it, considering how well Florida State's going to throw the ball with those front seven. Uh, you know, if you start getting in a situation where guys are getting into the second and third level, getting into the secondary and that front seven's not stopping them, then all of a sudden you have to be, bring pressure from the outside or bring pressure from corners or safety. And that's where, you know, the full action game is really going to hurt you over the top. And that's something that over the past couple of years, comes with defense has really been hurt by. And, um, you know, I think they're playing people sort of play and stop them with the seven and then hopefully it begin but it could be a really, really long night in the valley. Uh Taj Boyd told the ESPN All Access, I believe it was on Thursday, that this game is ranked so high, you know, it's a big it's very important, it's ranked so high. But it's also ranked so high that if one of the teams loses, it's not that big of a deal. Coming out of Taj Boyd's mouth, does that make an issue and should the coaching staff be worried about that? Well, I think he's kind of uh, parroting what his coach would say. You know, the, the, the loser of this game is still, you know, has a chance to be ranked in the top ten or still has a chance to go to a BCS bowl. But, you know, I think if you, uh, you know, you get away from the coach speak and saying kind of the proper thing, you realize that the winner of this game has the inside track on the ACC Atlantic Division Championship, um, you know, the inside track on winning the ACC Championship. They stay in the feed to keep those national championship hopes alive. While the loser, you know, now you've just got to finish out strong and, and hope that you can impress the voters enough to make a BCS bowl game. There's everything on the line in this game. Uh, so the postseason possibility is just in game seven. What is the atmosphere going to be like down in Death Valley tomorrow night? It's going to be uh, electric. We we actually went up a little bit earlier today. And, um, we only need some of the ESPN guys, Kirk Kirk Street and Chris Fowler and you know, the campus is really just different. It's even different than it was for the Georgia game. For the Georgia game, it was, you know, electric on Friday, and, and you could kind of feel it that, 
today on campus, it was almost like you could really feel something big brewing. All the fans were already in town. People were already out on Bowman Field getting ready for, for game day. And, um, you know, with, an, with a nighttime environment, the ESPN supposed to do something uh, again with the buses coming around the stadium before Clemson runs down the hill. We're hearing that. I think this, uh, this atmosphere is probably going to be as good as you will ever see in college football. You mentioned the buses coming down the hill on the ESPN. I watched the Georgia game on ESPN. When I saw those buses pull up, I'll tell you what, I do not like Clemson whatsoever. But I was pumped. I was pumped. I was motivated to watch Clemson knock Georgia around. Now, tomorrow night, I'm not going to be so motivated. <laughs> Uh, it, it really was electric. It was it was fun to watch. That's for sure. Oh, I'd want to go. I just can't go any time that Florida State is anywhere around there. Uh, the CEO, the, the CEO of the Chick Fil A Bowl, Gary uh, Stockin, is in town uh, tomorrow night for the game. He's doing a lot of uh, press and everything, but he's there because he's checking out because one of these two teams, despite uh, one of them obviously going on to winning, but the other one will be most likely in the Chick Fil A Bowl. This is Clemson. How comfortable are you as a reporter? for a second straight year going to watch them in the Chick-fil-A Bowl? It, it, it would be a big disappointment for this, uh, you know, for this fan base. And, you know, a lot of it's the fact that, you you know, you went to the Chick-fil-A Bowl last year and, you know, it was a great ball game against LSU. But, you know, when you have made it up to number three and it's, you know, the Saturday before the BCS rankings come out and you have a home game against, you know, the team that, that really stands in your way of getting to a championship and you have BCS dreams, Chick fil A bowl is a great bowl game, but it's a disappointment. Who do you think has a better chance of winning the Heisman this year, Taj Boyd or Jameis Winston? I think we'll see tomorrow night when this game is over. Um, I, yeah, I would say Taj Boyd just because he's the older player. To me, you know, when I look at, at this game tomorrow night and I look at two teams that are both extremely talented, both have NFL talent on both sides, um, both have great players, both have great coaches. You know, this one's going to come down with three or four plays maybe. And I think when you've got uh, a kid that's played five games in, in, in college and he's never been in an atmosphere like this, you go with a guy that's been in big games. And Taj has been on both sides of wins and losses in big games. And, you know, I, I give a little bit of a nod to him. We're talking with David Hood, senior writer for TigerNet.com. David, I got Tommy Bowden coming up in the 9 o'clock hour. I'm going to ask you real quick, what's the biggest difference you've seen in the coaching between when Tommy Bowden was the coach there and Dabba Sweeney was under him, and now Dabba Sweeney is the head coach there? The biggest difference is the athletes that are, that are coming in. I think Clemson, you know, everybody had this, you know, perception that Clemson recruited really well. But the fact that it, you know, was – they won a top 10 recruiting program and maybe not even a top 20. They got nice athletes. CJ Spillage, Kobe Ford, two, two great examples. But, you know, as somebody that covers this team, I can tell you that these players just look different than they did three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. You know, this was a team that went on against Alabama in 2008 down there in the, in the Georgia Dome to open up the season and they got physically beat up. They, they absolutely just got steamrolled and pushed around, and Dabo remembers that, and, you know, it's kind of been his, uh, you know, biggest uh, goal for this team is that that's never going to happen again, and these players just are, are different. There's a different caliber of player across the board now under Swingy than there was under Tommy Bowden. All right, I'll ask you this. I'm not going to ask you the winner of tomorrow night's game, but I will ask you this. There's another team in the ACC that's undefeated. That's Miami. They barely made it out of North Carolina last night. But they did it. Realistically, they're probably going to be in Charlotte here for the ACC championship game. Who's the other team that's going to be against them? <laughs> the winner of tomorrow night's game. You know what? I actually, I actually think that it. Uh, you know, right now I think it would be you know Clemson again, just because of the home field advantage tomorrow and because of the older quarterback. But you know, this one, who knows who's going to win this football game? And I'm not trying to weasel a lot of. I think Clemson's going to win. But this one's a toss-up, and it, it really is going to come down to, to three to five plays, and it, it's going to be who's going to make those plays that's going kind to of decide it. I don't think it's going to be a blowout or a two-touchdown game in any way. I think this one's going to be just like the Georgia game. It's going to come right down to the wire. Uh, we do something on this call called The Last Call. It's basically a shout-out on our show to anything going on in the sports world. Give a shout-out. What's your last call? Well, no, if, if I'm going to have – if it's for me, then I'm going to give a shout-out to uh, – 
to Peyton Manning and the Broncos going in and, and shutting Jim Irsay up on Sunday uh, in Indianapolis. I, I give you credit for that. I appreciate that because every time we ask somebody that, they always go to whatever we're talking about. It doesn't have to be what we're talking about, so I like that. <laughs> and I do hope that they shut out the Colts. David Hood, thanks for joining us. You're a senior writer for TigerNet.com. Hopefully I get a chance to see you here in Charlotte for the ACC championship game. I just hope you're not covering Clemson at the time. 